the chemical weathering of rocks. Please make note of the objectives that are covered in this PowerPoint. Chemical weathering breaks down rocks by changing the composition of the rock, adding or removing chemical elements, and changing them into other materials. This process leads to the disintegration of the rock. Notice the grave marker and how the bottom portion of the grave marker is indecipherable. It's, it's smooth. The, uh, only the upper portion is still visible. If we took look at a different view of this, you can see that there's a ledge overhanging the tomb marker that has protected the upper portion of the marker from the elements. The bottom portion, however, has been exposed to rain and has therefore undergone chemical weathering that has basically wiped out the face of the tomb marker. There's, there are no longer any markings on it. Now think back to what you've learned so far about mechanical weathering and what you know about chemical weathering and think about how is chemical weathering different from mechanical weathering. Pause for a moment and write your answer down. Think you have it? Did you get something like this? Chemical weathering changes the composition of the rock, breaking down the minerals. Mechanical weathering breaks a rock into smaller pieces without changing the mineral composition. Now there are several types of chemical weathering, oxidation, dissolution, hydrolysis, and some biological forms like lichen. Let's go through these. Oxidation. You know this as rust. When minerals in a rock containing iron or magnesium react with oxygen in the atmosphere, a mineral that is called an oxide is formed. The green patina on copper is also an oxidation reaction. If you see red or orange sandstones or red soils, they contain hematite and limonite, which are the oxidized minerals that were in those soils. Dissolution, on the other hand, breaks down the minerals into their component elements. Now most minerals don't dissolve much in pure water. But if you add a little bit of acid, much more of the mineral will dissolve. Limestone completely dissolves in the presence of acids. Now what this produces is ions of the mineral dissolved in the water. The water then carries these ions away and this is how caves are formed in limestone. But acid in nature? I thought acids only happened in labs. You have a natural carbonation that happens when rainwater comes in contact with carbon dioxide that's in the air or the soil. This forms a mildly acidic carbonic acid. Air pollution causes acid rain to form. This is more acidic than carbonic acid and causes more weathering on rocks. Lichen produce acids too. Now, a lichen is a combination of a fungus and an algae. They live together in a symbiotic relationship. They're really quite interesting organisms. Lichen can live on bare rock, but when they do this, they break down the rock by secreting acids and other chemicals that promote the decomposition of the rock. Now, the process of hydrolysis is really a special kind of dissolution. This affects silica minerals. Feldspar is especially prone to hydrolysis. This is how clay is formed. Now think back through your notes and answer this question. What two types of chemical weathering result from reaction of rocks with acids? You think you have it? Did you answer dissolution and hydrolysis? Now there are quite a few products that are produced by chemical weathering. You can see that clays 
and oxides are formed as well as ions that are dissolved in water. But what about quartz? Quartz doesn't seem to decompose at all chemically. Now think about it. The rock granite is made of feldspar, quartz, and mica. And as granite decomposes, the feldspars are turned into clay and some dissolved ions. The muscovite mica also turns to clay and some dissolved ions. But the quartz remains quartz. This is why the majority of our sand is made up of quartz crystals. The factors that affect chemical weathering rates are mostly water and heat. You think about it, more water and more warmth will equal more chemical weathering. Water is necessary for most of these chemical reactions and so an area that gets a lot of rainfall is going to have more chemical weathering happening. Warmer temperatures speed up chemical reactions and so a warm moist area is going to have much more chemical weathering than a cold moist area. What kind of weathering do you think a cold moist environment is going to have more of? Weathering is a joint effort. Physical and chemical weathering occur together. They don't happen in isolation of each other. Physical weathering breaks rocks into pieces so that there's more surface area exposed to chemical weathering, which breaks it down even further into its mineral components or ions that are dissolved in the water. Eventually, soil starts to form. 